Welcome everyone to Throwback Gaming's Let's Play of Our Life Getting and Always Part 25. It's finally time everyone to end step two and go on to step three. But before I begin, a little disclaimer. This is going to be a very long episode. And I know because I played ahead just a little bit just so I could see how long this was going to be. And it's going to be a very long episode. So... This one's going to probably be twice as long as a normal episode, so you've been warned. <laughs> but let's jump in, shall we? Are you sure? Yes. There's no denying it. Today was, a ver was the very last day of summer. Tomorrow you were heading to class. Boo. <laughs> you were excited to go back. Anxiety gnawed at your stomach. It was a bummer, or your feelings were muddled. muddled. Bummer. School up, I mean, school. Summer had been so much fun. When you thought about going back to school, it was with a sense of loss. Soon, you wouldn't be able to choose how your days were spent without the school bell telling you where to be and when. I know, right? <laughs> it was with a heavy heart that you chose your outfit for your final day of freedom. Life was going to be different. You had, come, you had come to think of summer vacation as the norm, but school sucked up in the majority of the year, whereas summer vacation was just a reprise in the middle. So rather than being different, it was kind of a return to normal. What did your normal life look really anyways? You considered how fondly your moms talked about their summer vacations as kids. You dimly recognized that one year, the pattern of school and summer itself would be over for good. It was hard to imagine. You got distracted, one arm still out of your sleep. You pulled it through and put your mind back to the present. This season had brought about plenty of changes like its own, like Kyra's visit, though like that, it too was coming to an end today. You were happy you finally got a chance to know her. You become extremely fond of her. You didn't really like her. Your mind wasn't made up on how you felt about her. You didn't care one way or the other. I'm glad we got to meet her. She was interesting to be around. You liked how easy it was to talk to her. You finished dressing, which was good. Cove would be here any moment. You agreed to see his mom off together. Well, isn't that sweet? Officially, the plan was that he would come over to bring you around to his house when she was ready to go. But you both knew that hanging out for... Wait a minute. But you both knew you'd be hanging out for a little bit beforehand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Carver's visit had trouble Cove when it first happened. It had been a sudden change, thanks to Mr. Holden's infamous tech, uh... T... T... Oh, tendency. Okay. Duh. His infamous tendency to surprise people, but once he was able to adjust, he had been pretty good spirits with her around. It was a relief for everyone. Yep. Turned out good. <laughs> you turned to your desk where your box containing your accessories resigned. You had gotten out and bought an anklet. <laughs> you gotten out and bought several anklets. Ooh, overachiever. Or accessories reminding you of that anklet conversation. You still didn't have one yourself. Let's go out and get one. Well, we got one because of Cove saying that was something he liked. Your eyes bored into the box. Should you wear it for Cove's visit today? You put one anklet bracelet on or you didn't wear one. Uh, we're putting it on. Your heart pounded as you slipped the hoop through the class and, and fastened it in place. Would Cove spot it? Your face grew hot as you imagined how he might react. Yeah, that might be interesting. The next thought that crossed your mind was... It would only be polite to get the door for Cove. You went downstairs to wait. You couldn't wait to see Cove, so you went downstairs to meet him when he arrived, or Cove knew your house well enough, you could lounge in your room and wait for him. <laughs> this is being polite, this is being excited, and this is m us thinking we're kings or something, you know? Or queens, but I mean, we're playing as a guy, so, but yeah, whatever. Not important. <laughs> Let's go down and see him, because we're excited. You bound down the stairs, your hand glitted over the rail. You wanted to make sure you got there first. If you didn't hurry, your moms might answer it. It was only a few minutes later when the doorbell rang. As you chosen to stand beside it to wait for Cove, there was no delaying in pulling it open. 
Cove was there, just as expected. Seeing you, he smiled quietly. Aw. Hey. Hey, Cove, come on in. Once he stepped inside, you beckoned for him to follow you upstairs. Back in your room, you sat down in your bed and waited for Cove to settle in as you knew he would. With other guests, you might have offered them a seat, but you and Cove were long past those tentative stations of friendship. <laughs> we're not friends. I mean, we are, but, you know, we're not really. <laughs> your room was familiar to him as his own. You watched as Cove sat down in your desk chair, his preferred spot. He rolled it closer to the bed to make it easier to chat, tweaking the angle so that he was facing you fully. Once happy with the position, he leaned in towards you, hands held in his lap. His actions weren't the one of someone who planned on moving from his spot anytime soon, even though you had an appointment to keep together for that day. When's your mom leaving? We got some time. She's still going to shower and step before she goes. She didn't want me to just keep hanging around while she was doing that. <laughs> He's horrible. He lifted his head, his gaze drifting out through the window and chuckled. I can't believe she's already leaving, just when I'm getting used to her being there every day. He leaned back in the chair, a wry smile tickling his cheeks. Yeah, you nod it, she'll be back, her time goes by so fast. She'll be back. He cocked his head thoughtfully before shrugging. Hmm. He ran, a, <clears throat> excuse me. he ran a hand through his hair before shaking his head, as if shaking off the topic like a dog, whipping off water, following a dip in the sea. Cove looked back to you, lips parted as if he was about to speak. But instead, his eyes widened, his mouth closed into a tiny frown. Something had caught his attention. I wonder what that could be, hint, hint. <laughs> Something wrapped around where the end of your leg met your foot. He cast your eyes up back to your face, then down to your anklet and back to your face. He repeated the process once, twice more, as if struggling to hold the two items in tangent. Maybe he was weighing up whether this could be a coincidence or not. Or maybe he was just too shy to verbalize his thoughts, or was still trying to find the words, and this was the most he could manage. The attention made you feel... <clears throat> excuse me. Bashful, amused, thrilled, regretful, or pleased. Really bashful. You almost wanted to tuck your feet away and out of Cove's intended focus, but doing so would meddle your message further. On his next glance to your face, Cove saw your expression had shifted. You watched as his bewilderment eroded into mortification as you realized he had been caught staring. He's so cute. <laughs> he quickly spun in his chair to face the wall instead, allowing you to glimpse the flush that had spread all across to his ears. He twisted in his seat wringing his hands and determinately avoiding looking in your direction again. It seemed that he decided against saying anything at all. Does it look good? You stay quiet yourself. Sorry, or what's the problem, Cove? Does it look good? He mumbled something ineligible as he slumped over. With how he was hunched over, the quiet words had no chance of reaching you. You weren't going to get anything out of him in this state. You waited for him to come around before speaking again. Finally, he piped up very softly. Did you do it because of what I said before? I mean, you know... The last few words were whispered as though they were a precious secret. The ankle bracelet. Yes. No. Maybe. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you shrugged? Yes. His eyes squeezed shut. You had no idea if the answer made him feel better or more nervous. Eventually, he looked down at his lap, where his fingers were flexing and curly in an awkward dance of nerves. His chest rose as he breathed deep. Well, it looks good on you. Well, thank you. <laughs> your heart scuttered in your chest like a, like a stone skipping across water. One big leap from the unexpected compliment followed, followed by a series of shorter ones as you absorbed the words. You beamed at him. He was looking at you again at last, and returned sm the smile shyly. This really couldn't have worked out better, you thought. And there was nothing else he could add after that. Cove's posture tittered, his eyes eyelids blinking quickly. 
um, Jamie, I actually kind of wanted to talk about... He drew a deep breath before concluding his sentence. What happened on the trip? His voice shook as he pushed the words out. Your eyes got, uh, grew <laughs> got, at the reaction. Cove pulled his arms around his chest, his shoulders hunching inward. He knew what he was implying back when you'd been in the loft and nearly kissed. Cove hadn't read a word about it since it happened, or, well, almost, hap almost happened. I'm sorry for moving away like that when you tried to. He dropped the sentence. He didn't push for him to finish. It was convoyed what had, what, what it needed. And I'm sorry for how long I've been since, you know, acting like it didn't even happen. I've thought about it. I mean, I haven't forgotten about it. I don't keep thinking about it all the time. <laughs> You've been thinking about it a lot. <laughs> you told it on yourself. <laughs> Excuse me. He hung his red cheek head, cheeked head, forehead propped up for by a couple of fingers. You could tell he was already regretting how this was going. Sorry for being weird. It's just I kind of thought or hoped that sometime I'd be able to do this with me talking about everything. Everything? There's more? He nodded ever so slightly. Your face felt a lot hotter after that. I wonder what it is he wants to tell us. Cove brightened a little at your positive reaction. His explanation continued. I, well, could sort of picture how it might go. What it'd be like with you and me. Aw, that's so sweet. But just the first part. I couldn't ever, ima ever imagine anything that'd come after. And now that it's actually happened, we're here, it's... He took another deep breath, stuttering on the exhaust. Or the exhale. <laughs> the exhaust. The Santa car. This makes everything different. Things don't have to be different. This is hard for me. Or should we find a crystal ball for answers? I don't think we'd see anything. Nothing. That's kind of sad for us. That isn't what I meant. It's just, they can't really show the future. They're just glass. <laughs> He's being literal. <laughs> You're happy to see him being livelier. His wide eyes met yours as he looked at you, less burdened from the anxiety that built up inside him. How about a do-over? Do you want to try again? You silently returned his grades, or you smiled reassuringly? You want to try again? <laughs> no. The word shot out reflexively. He couldn't help it, but immediately cringed at himself. Do you really mean that? No. I mean, I do. I want to. I want to try again, if you still want to. You kissed him. You were scared, but you kissed him. You couldn't do it after all. <laughs> You untangled yourself from the resting position and stood up. Realizing your attempt to actually go for it, Cove straightened up in his chair, his hands coiled together in his lap. As you moved towards him, you noticed his knees knocking together as he trembled. His decision not to rise from the chair made perfect sense. If he was that shaky when sitting down, there was no way he'd manage to stand without at least one of you falling over. Your legs brushed against his quivering ones as you came to a stop in front of him. Cove was staring up at you. As you leaned in towards him, he echoed the motion and drew in towards you. Once you were close enough to feel Cove's breath on your face, you closed your eyes. The last thing you saw was Cove quickly doing the same. <laughs> your lips met Cove's for a moment. His lips were pressed tightly together, unyielding, but it was alright. You were kissing him, and he was kissing you. Your stomach summer salted. You couldn't believe it was really happening. In that moment, it felt warm, and it felt nice, and it felt right. Aww. He drew back and Cove slipped down into the chair. The knuckles of his hands pale after gripping, uh, gripping so tightly. Thinking that he could do the same, oh, he could do with some space to breathe. Figur figuratively and literally, he took a step back. Cove shut up his stance ri rigid. <laughs> He's adorable. Cove plastered a hand over his mouth, his eyes shut tight. His back then became bowed, shrinking him down. You could only make out a few words, but he managed to summon. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't believe we actually... His eyes flew open wide, but he didn't look your way, let alone meet your gaze. We kissed. We kissed. 
you were full of nerves. His reaction was pretty cute. You thought his his flutter was funny. You were worried he was being so sporadic. Probably nervous. <laughs> Blinking, you try to process what had happened. You lay a hand on your cheek, half worried about pinching yourself to check to make this, sure this wasn't a dream. You found your skin as hot as a car door at noon on a summer stain. Excuse me. Cove only slammed his eyes closed once again. Did you like it? Was it bad? It was nice, wasn't it? Cove, it's okay. Did I do something wrong? Did you like it? <clears throat> he was still holding his hand to his face, but in an attempt to answer it, he emitted a muffled whisper. With that obviously not working, he uncovered his face at last, bringing a hand to lay against his chest. He looked up at you. Yeah, well that's good. He opened his mouth, poised to speak, and pursed his lips as words filled him. On his third or fourth attempt, you heard what he said. I did like it. I'm glad that we, you know. <laughs> he swallowed, seemingly not able to speak the actual word. That we kissed? Cove ducked his head, but nodded. You got the impression that he was grateful that you finished his thought. But you, your direct words had pierced his Achilles heel. He grinned, thrilled that the experience had been a welcome one. It's always good. The smile on Cove's face was real, but weary. Not unlike the one he wore after a long and exhausting day of activity. Like when he made a new personal best. The work had been hard, but the reward had been worth it. With some newfound confidence, he drew himself up as he inhaled deeply. Each word he spoke next was delicate. Jamie, I like you. A lot. Probably way too much. Oh, it's adorable. <laughs> he ducked his head bashfully and opened an eye, peeking at you through the hair that had fallen over his face like a veil. He managed to smile. <laughs> Thanks for waiting for me. His eyes sparkled just looking at you. His affection transparently clear. He never could hide what he was feeling, and you couldn't be more grateful for today. You smiled at him, you hugged him, I like you too. You breathed a sigh of relief for I like you even more. Co squeaked out a nervous giggle. <laughs> he curled his, his hand into a loose fist and brushed the, the knuckles idly against his cheek. Words evaded him as he opened his mouth and closed it again. I don't. He gave up on finishing the, sis to the sentence and said smiling again. He rubbed his eyes with the heel of his hands. It was an action usually reserved for much later in the day, but at this point it already felt like a long day. Co then pressed a hand to his creased forehead. Um, does this mean I'm your b b b b boyfriend or something now? Should we tell our parents? I don't know what my dad or mom would do. There was a lot of concern in there. You honed in on the simplest. There was no way your mom should let you have a boyfriend, even though that word jitta posed with Cove's name and made your heart race. My parents won't let me have a boyfriend or even a something. It's not fair. I wish we were older. It's okay. It doesn't matter, though. We like each other, and that's important. Or you didn't know what to say. Nothing else... Nothing anybody else thought about your relationship change. What was between the two of you? Code lifted his hand from his chest and reached towards you, halting halfway, and then slowly, cautiously, hooked his fingers around yours. His palm pressed against the back of your hand. You let him hold your hand, or you, you held his hand back. Uh, no. <laughs> his thumb slipped into the crook of your paw. He squeezed your hand gently. We can get it to work. We will always figure something out sooner or later. Oh, You're right, no matter what, it's okay in the end when it's the two of us. Your forthright statement made Cove gasp, but his smile, the smile that followed and his tight grip in your hand told you that he appreciated it. <laughs> Jamie, Cove. The sudden call from downstairs caught you both unaware. Nearly forgotten the world outside your room. From the guilty look on his face, Cove would have done the same. Just had a call. Mom, Cove's mom is ready to go. If you're quick, she might keep the mandated motherly smothering to a minimum. You doubted that, but it was nice that Mom and Mrs. Priest had their strange sense of humor in common. Your eyes met Cove's wordlessly. You headed downstairs together. Each step on the way down was painfully slow, like he was trying to delay the inevitable. 
tell Buddy it's since leaving the house and code first together before both of you could cross the street. The door's open. Dad must be taking her stuff out. He swallowed hard. She's really gonna leave. You smiled at him reassuringly. You gave him a, his back a pat. You rested your hand on his arm and this isn't the last time you'll ever see her. I know, I know, but I got used to having her here. Yeah. It was hard to think of a world where you didn't have both your moms living at home with you. So you couldn't even imagine how hurt Cope must have been feeling knowing his mom was sleeping. You thought you saw his bottom lip quiver just before he turned his head away from you. We don't have to head over if you don't want to. No, it'll be worse if I miss her leaving. Okay. At that, some of the conflict worrying on his face eased a bit. Together, you went across the street and inside his house, finding his parents in the living room surrounded by his mom's pack things. Hey, kids. Good timing, I just called the taxi. Mm-hmm. Oh, and hey, Jamie, I'm glad I got to see you today. It was fabulous getting to know you this summer. I finally got to put a face to a name I heard so many times. She winked and Cove pouted on cue over the teasing. <laughs> I'm really glad I got to meet you too. I hope you have a good time visiting. Bye, you didn't say anything in response. Hope you had a good time visiting. I really did, thank you. Nodding, Kyra turned her attention back to her voice. She patted Cliff on the arm with a warm smile and then she enveloped Cove in a crushing hug. Initially, Cove squirmed to break free from her grip but his mom was unfazed and kept him locked in place. Heartbeats later, he gave in and hugged her back tightly. And I'm so happy this trip was a success. Cliff looked like he was bursting with pride. And then Cove stiffened. Kyra loosened her hold on him enough to study his face concern. She spoke her next words in a whisper that had been meant just for her son. Do you want to unshelf it? Raising an eyebrow, Cliff watched them carefully. His smile began to falter. What's wrong? Cove sighed, his gaze flickered over to you for a moment, and then just as quick, back on his parents. It's all right. Are you sure? I don't want to do it now. I can tell him later. Nervously, you watched the exchange with growing suspicion that Cove didn't want to have the conversation while you were here. You wondered if you should offer to leave when Kyra gave Cove a pat on the head. You can always call me if you want to be if you want me to be part of the conversation, okay? I'll call. Thanks, Mom. Cliff still looked baffled about what Kyra and Cove were referring to, but you watched his soldiers relax slowly. He figured he decided to wait for Cove to be ready to talk to him. And with Cliff's silence, things seemed to settle down for now. After that it wasn't long before the taxi arrived, rolling up in front of the house and it was clear and in clear view of the door. Kyra stood up, smiling sadly. Well, that's my ride. Yeah. The matching reply got a chuckle out of Kara as you all filed out of the house. Father and son went to get her bags. Went to the side, you spot your family waiting by the street. And to your surprise, Derek was also with them. He stood uncomfortably and waved as soon as you noticed him. Hey, Jamie. Hey, Co. When did you get here? My dad dropped me off a little bit ago. Thought I could visit one more time before school started. You picked a busy time, sorry. Derek couldn't even look at Cove. He nervously kept rolling a pebble with the bottom of his shoe. I wasn't even thinking about your mom leaving today. I'm sorry, dude. What? You're not interrupting anything. You're always welcome here. Well, that was nice. It would have been sad if I didn't get to say goodbye before leaving. I think so, too. It was apparent Derek would have preferred to have gotten here in a more opportune moment. He never liked being impolite, but their reassuring words suited his worries. The tension he was holding in his body lessened and he looked like he was feeling more himself. Bye, Derek. It was fun getting to know you. Bye, ma'am. Uh, is there anything I can help you with? Nah, don't worry about that. We're about set. In the short amount of time, Cliff had gathered and packed the bags into the trunk. Carver took one last look around everyone inside. Alright, don't want to keep the driver waiting. It's time to head out. The little crowd that it formed around started the choir of farewells and uh, well wishes traveling, but Kyra made no move to get in the taxi. She placed her attention on Cove. 
I'll call when I get to the airport and when I make it to Nevada. Also, you better call the moment you walk in the door at home. Otherwise, we'll be wondering all night if you got into trouble on the way there. I can do that. And could you could yeah. And could you call tomorrow too, so I can tell you how school went? Of course, I want to hear all about it. Kyra put a hand on Cove's head and effectually ruffled his hair one last time. Then she let go, only to move on to squeezing his cheeks in her hands instead. Mom, I love you so much, baby. She was chuckling by the time she freed him and rounded things off with a small tap to the tip of his nose. <laughs> Cove rubbed his face again with a grin. Finally, she walked into the car waving and took her seat in the taxi. Cliff hooked an arm around Cove's shoulder and kept him close as it began to pull away. For a moment, Cove looked up at his dad and then wrapped an arm around his back. Aw. That's sweet. Bye, Mom. Bye. Travel safe. Kyra rolled down the window and stuck her head out of it. She waved again while blowing kisses at Cove and Cliff. See you again. Before she was out of sight, you decided to. Call out your family and hers, wave goodbye, or watch quietly. We'll wave. As the taxi headed down the road, you stuck your hand in the air to send her off. The cab turned down the road and completely disappeared from view. Cove let his dad go and took a few steps into the empty street, still looking in the direction his mom went. He smiled quietly, deep in thought. You got the impression Cove was feeling better than he was earlier. He finally was content with the way things were. Well, that's good. The summer breeze brought a sweet jingling across the way. It was the wind chime you'd given Cove. That's cool. He had hung it at the house, and it was a familiar sound in the neighborhood. <laughs> you jumped a bit when your mom put her hand on your shoulder, pulling you away from your thoughts. She smiled when you looked at her. This was a great vacation, huh? Yeah, I don't think so. You're not in agreement. You shrugged. I don't know. Summer isn't over until the second I fall asleep. <laughs> uh, we'll say yeah. That's what I was hoping here. Cove walked back to the group, still genuinely happy. Derek grinned at him welcomely, and everyone else smiled at him, even Elizabeth. Well, Mom clasped her hands together, bringing everyone's attention back to the present. It's almost lunchtime. I think I'll put something special together. Okay, so I know I said this was going to be a really long episode, but I decided that I'm going to cut it here, and we're going to do lunch and everything that comes afterwards in the next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel to know when videos to come out. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll see you next time when we finish up this part and we start... Well, we finish up this part so that we're at the beginning of the creation screen for, scene, uh, for step three. But until then, peace out, everybody.